this week as former President Donald Trump came face to face with his former fixer, they call him, Michael Cohen, for the first time in five years. Cohen took the stand as a witness in Trump's $250 million fraud trial, and there was no shortage of drama to the proceedings. Fresh off his testimony, Michael Cohen, author of Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. That's the name of the book. He joins us now. Michael, I must start with this. Take a listen to what Trump said about your testimony after he abruptly exited the courtroom on Wednesday. The witness just admitted that we won the trial and the judge should end this trial immediately. Thank you. What's your response? Yeah, I don't know where that even came from, to be honest. Donald Trump lives in a reality that only exists from his left ear to his right ear. Nobody else saw or heard any testimony from me that exonerates him that he won the trial. In fact, his lawyers made a motion for a directed verdict that Judge Angoron stated, and I've never heard a judge say this before, absolutely denied, not once, but twice. So where he comes up with this nonsense that we won, that my testimony, I said that he won, I have no idea what this guy talks about. It's this reality, and then there's Donald. <laughs> <laughs> now, Trump's outburst came just hours after he was slapped with a $10,000 fine for violating his gag order with these comments. Take a listen. This judge is a very partisan judge, with a person who's very partisan sitting alongside of him, perhaps even much more partisan than he is. Now, the judge forced Trump to take the stand to explain his comments, and he testified under oath. He was talking about you. The judge said that claim was, was not credible. What's your reaction? What happened? Could he have been talking about you? No. And he knew he wasn't—the judge obviously knew that he wasn't— let me be clear about this. This was the most limited gag order that I've ever seen. It was so limited that it was almost impossible to actually violate it, if you were anyone other than Donald Trump. The judge and Goron stated, say anything that you want about me, just don't talk about my staff, don't talk about my law clerk. And he can't help himself. And the he's, law clerk is the one that sits next to the Of judge. course. Okay. And he's like a petulant child. You tell that child, you can go into this candy store that has 10,000 items. You have a peanut allergy, so you can't eat M&M peanuts. And that's all that the kid wants. And he is going to fight you tooth and nail until he gets what he wants. He doesn't care about what the judge said, doesn't $10,000, he doesn't care. The only thing that's going to stop him is if they actually say to him, you know what, next time, you're going to stay downstairs in the cell for the entire night. Don't do it again. Because what the judge said to him, you're not only creating a hassle, but what you're doing is dangerous to my staff, and I won't allow it. Michael, Trump's been showing up at a lot of the court proceedings lately. What do you think that's about? Is he trying to intimidate witnesses and others in court? I can't even count the number of verbal attacks he continues to make against you. What's that all about? Well, it's definitely witness intimidation. That's and when he had heard that I was coming in the week before, which I was unfortunately not able to sit because of a medical condition. It was pushed off for one week. He then could not not show up because that would show that the only reason he was coming was for me. Then he comes to the uh, two days that I was on uh, the stand. And so will he come when his children, which is supposedly next week? I don't know. Now, now having just witnessed Trump's courtroom behavior firsthand, uh, what, what are your thoughts about his state of mind right now? You know him as well as anybody. Uh, after all, this is a guy who is running for president, and the first caucus is less than 12 weeks away. What is his state of mind? You looked at him. You said you looked at him in the eye. What is going through his mind right now? And what is he doing to show certain 
things that we in the public can see uh, uh, whether or not he's unhinged, under stress, or he's really as strong in fighting as he uh, tries to appear to be. But he looks, when I sat across from him, to me, he looks defeated. He looks like something I have never seen um, before, at least during the time period that I was with him. He absolutely looks like he has been defeated, he has lost, and that he doesn't know which way is north and which way is south. As far as unhinged, the guy has lost it. I mean, I don't know whether... I don't want to be a doctor here, but there's something cognitively wrong with him. Uh, I don't know also what his lawyers had shared with him in terms of a strategy. The strategy was to let's just denigrate Michael Cohen for eight hours for as many days as, you know, we can have him on the stand. Let's just continue to call him a perjurer, a liar, you know, a, a convict, a felon, whatever. And by doing that, they actually thought that they were going to be able to get this directed verdict. When they didn't get it, he slams his hands on the table. He jumps up. Secret Service jumps up after him. He makes a whole march to go outside. This is not clearly presidential. Could you imagine? This is only a New York attorney general civil matter. Could you imagine if, hypothetically, right now he had to deal with a foreign nation, with all that's going on in the country right now, in the world? Could you imagine this is the guy who's going to represent us? His children are supposed to testify this weekend. He's on the schedule. You as one that was like a son to him, do you think he's going to testify? Oh, there's no way he's taking the stand. Let me be very clear about this. He took the stand that Judge Ngoron had had enough for under three minutes. And he lied to the judge. He wasn't talking about me. He was talking about the judge's law clerk. The judge himself turned around after he made the statements under oath and turned around and said, I don't find your statements to be credible, meaning you're a liar. So for how many hours they're attacking me as being a liar, their client is the liar. And in fact, the, uh, the lawyers, Chris Kais, um, Chris Robert, um, and uh, Alina Haba, they're all swearing for Don. No, 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 no. It was all about Michael Cohen, all about Michael Cohen. No, it wasn't. It was about the judge's law clerk. The judge saw right through the lie, and he called him out on it. Michael Cohen, author, and uh, very glad that you came in and shared this with us. Thank you. Michael Cohen with us tonight.